in the Caribbean Sea right now. This is the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center. We just got that intermediate advisory uh, as we approach the 8 o'clock hour. This is holding steady intensity. Only change that we saw is now the pressure is down one millibar. But still, this is, it is, this is just a powerful, dangerous storm. Perfect organization. I mean, when you open a meteorology textbook and you look at a high-end hurricane, this is exactly what you're going to see. The perfectly formed eye. You have all the really strong wind speeds packed in in that eye wall. 165 mile per hour winds. And so large right now that it's even some of the far outer bands are lashing some parts of Puerto Rico. We're going to see rain throughout the day. This made landfall yesterday in the Grenadines, Category 4, 150 mile per hour storm, the strongest to impact the area on record. And of course, Hurricane Barrel has been breaking records left and right. There's a whole long list of superlatives at this point, but I think the most impressive is this is now the earliest Category 5 on record in the Atlantic. It beat the old record that was Hurricane Emily by more than two weeks. And by the way, Hurricane Emily was back in 2005. And that's a season that nobody wants to repeat. Now the list goes on and on for breaking records, but the more important thing is what is Barrel doing right now? There's two Hurricane Hunter flights in this storm, and it's showing that not only is Barrel still maintaining its intensity, but it's not being impacted by the shear that's just to the west of Barrel right now. This is uh, the Hurricane Hunter flight. So, uh, Jillian, is this the NOAA flight or is this the Air Force? This is the NOAA flight. So you saw the pass that they made through, and now they're coming back around, and they're going to make another pass through the eye. So you see the wind speeds. They're a little bit lower right now because they're well outside of where the strongest part of the storm is, but that will start to increase as they make their way into another pass of the eye wall. Hurricane warning out for Jamaica. This is going to be potentially big impacts for Jamaica. So if you know people there, you have friends, you have family that lives there, maybe you have friends or family that are vacationing there, give them a call. Have them tell you, you know, their plan for, for this system. Because this could be the first major hurricane to impact Jamaica since 2007. It's been a while. And then, of course, down the line, we've got the Cayman Islands under a hurricane watch right now. But we're going to continue to watch this very carefully down the line for maybe impacts in the lower 48. That's still yet to be determined. And Jordan's going to talk about some of those forecast options that we're seeing right now in just a minute. But this is the visible satellite. Of course, the sun coming up in this area, and we're getting the first views on visible satellite of Hurricane Barrel, and my goodness, to see this in early July, it's just not something that happens. I mean, we're looking at all the lightning around the center of the, the, um, the eye wall and the eye, and then of course you've got some lightning and some of the far outer bands, but this is just a system that is extremely dangerous. And with the eye wall replacement cycle we saw yesterday morning, we saw the hurricane force winds expand a little bit. That's typically what happens in an eye wall replacement is not only do we see a bump down in intensity, but we see an expansion of the hurricane force winds. And then, of course, this is ramped right back up to not just a Cat 4, but a Cat 5. Hurricane force winds now extend 40 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds 125 miles out of the center. As mentioned, Puerto Rico going to see some rain and wind from this today. But this is moving over extremely warm water. So that's not an issue. That's like fuel for hurricanes. What could impact this in intensity wise and what we're hoping brings down the intensity is there is some shear that's sitting just around Hispaniola, just south of Hispaniola, over to towards Jamaica, but still, as it moves into Jamaica, it's going to be a major hurricane. That's dangerous. And then, as we take this towards the Yucatan, it's still a hurricane, but areas, say, like Belize City, which sits right at sea level, or maybe even Tulum, Cozumel, Cancun, keep a close eye on this one. And even if it comes in as a say a category one, that's still going to have huge impacts. Here's a look at some of the shear that I was just talking about. It's not a lot, but we don't need much to take down this from a category five intensity. We were still outside of that zone where any of the shear would start affecting it. But as it gets closer to Jamaica, here's the hope is that this shear is going to take the edge off the intensity. Jordan, I know people in the lower 48 are watching this really closely here, in, you know, say Texas, all the way over to Louisiana. 
because there's still some wiggle room in the pattern that maybe we see a, a northern turn. That's still yet to be determined as we get later into the week. Yeah, and obviously parts of South Texas is no stranger already this season seeing impacts from tropical cyclones, even if they were indirect impacts, still impacts nonetheless. So let's continue the conversation as we kind of watch this thing work its way westward again, moving at about 20, 22 miles per hour. Uh, I know that we're a little concerned on what's going to happen in Puerto Rico. We're already seeing a couple of thunderstorms out there this morning and maybe some high surf. We've got more rain expected for Hispaniola and then maybe more of a, a potential direct impact impact in and around Jamaica. And so we wanted to pause it there to kind of show you the timing on that. That's going to be as we work our way into tomorrow, all time zones here on our map are Eastern time. Um, and the fact that it's even this close doesn't matter if it's a direct impact or not. You guys are going to be looking at really big rainfall, flood potential, storm surge. Everything that comes with the tropical entity is going to be impacting you. And then, of course, then it skirts westward, going into more of a sheared environment, which will hopefully help break it down even more. Because from now through tomorrow, we are expected to see this thing downgrade. Let's hope that that forecast stays true. We could see that with the shear profile. But then you head into this upcoming weekend, and you're like, man, Cancun, Tulum, some of these areas. Maybe folks are traveling there after the 4th of July holiday. Hey, I'm going to do back-to-back -back. visit family on Independence Day, and then boom, head down to uh, the Yucatan Peninsula. You guys are expected to see some big rain out of this, and you'll likely get hurricane force winds um, with some localized flooding here. There's a pocket of 2 to 3 inches, and even 3 to 5 right around Tulum. And then it works its way into the Gulf, which then, of course, we'll see what happens after this upcoming weekend. So this is the probability of hurricane force winds, and you can see, you know, how, how much that probability is certain closer to the storm itself. We've been watching, you know, one specific buoy really see the wind ramp up as the eye is getting closer and closer uh, throughout the morning hours. And the wind field, notice how large it is, will skirt Hispaniola. All right, you will likely see um, definitely tropical storm force, but the potential for hurricane force storm winds on that southern tip of Dominican Republic. And then we will see the likelihood of all of that for Jamaica as we work our way into your midweek time frame, thinking Wednesday afternoon. Then it heads farther to the west. The wind field here can go from Belize all the way up into Cancun, and that's when we're expected this thing to hopefully be downgraded to maybe, you know, Category 1 hurricane, still looking at hurricane impacts there ac across the Yucatan as it then sneaks into the bath waters of the Gulf. We know the water temp's been super warm for all this, but what are the upper levels of the dynamics doing of the atmosphere, which could ultimately maybe take this thing down 65 mile per hour storm into Sunday morning. So confidence um, over the next couple of days, pretty sure we know where this thing is going. You can see that with our, our models and how close they are together. A little more of an uncertainty on the path here as it kind of jiggles towards Cancun and then separation around Brownsville, Texas, or again, you know, much of the eastern side of Mexico, we'll kind of see, and that depends on the high pressure ridge, that same high pressure ridge here, Kelly, that is creating some big heat for yeah. much of the country. And fueling storms across the middle of the and country as storms. well. All that humidity coming.